Hi, I'm Dustin with Overworked Logic, and in this video, I'm going to show Crestron programmers how to use the TCP IP server symbol. The TCP IP server symbol allows you to establish a TCP IP server on your Crestron processor. Now note that it is not secure, it is plain text. It can be used for debugging purposes and also for some devices that need to connect to the processor. So the server means that it is opening up a port and listening for connections. I recently had to use this when testing a module that I was building in Simple Plus because in Simple Windows and in Debugger, serial strings are chopped off at 255 characters and I wasn't able to send a longer string so I couldn't test my module. To get around this, I used the TCP IP server symbol, set up a server and sent my strings in that way from a TCP client on my laptop. So what you need to do to add this is go to the configure view, that's this button here, and in the processor under ethernet, you can expand that. And what I like to do is just double click on an open slot, and then you can pick from a list of possible devices. Just press T to get to the T's and pick TCP IP server. I've already done that here, so I'm gonna use the one that I've already got. We're not gonna be doing much of a program here. I'm just going to connect some signals so we can see it in debugger. Before I do that though, I'm gonna right click and go configure device, which is also F6. And the thing that you need to set is this IP net address. Now a default address, it comes when you set it up as blank, you need to put something here. If you don't put anything, the server will not work. So typically you would put 0.0.0.0, which means it accepts connections from any IP address. If you wanted to lock that down to a specific device, you could put that specific IP address. So this is not a very good way to ensure security. I would just leave these as zero and deal with your networking. And you're probably going to use this more as debugging and testing anyways. So here under enable, we'll put that as one. I just defined a signal TCP IP TX with the dollar sign, TCP IP RX as the receive signal with the dollar sign. Then I've commented out these two signals, connect feedback, TCP IP status. Sometimes it's nice to see them. Now, the other thing I want to show you here is this port. So I've put 50,000. And the reason that I did that, if you press F1 and get the help file, it'll tell you, Crestron recommends using private port numbers. Private ports range from 49,152 through 65,535. The reason for that is there's system reserve ports below that range, things like 80 for the web server, 22 for SSH, stuff like that. When the processor is running, it's not going to let you assign a server to those ports. So you gotta pick something higher. So I'm gonna compile this program, load it, and we'll see how it works. I'm going to use PuTTY to demonstrate this. So I'm just going to go to putty.org, download PuTTY. So here it's launched, and I can put in the IP address, or in my case, it's a host name, mc4.dmi. And you wanna change this to telnet, other, telnet. And this is our port, 50123. Okay, so we're going to open this connection, and we will see that we got connect feedback. The status went to 3%. That's just because I'm displaying as percentage. I'm going to, I'm going to change that to unsigned decimal 2D. And if you look at the help file, it will tell you what that means. It's just good for debugging sometimes. 2D means connected, so that's good. And this initial string that you saw, because we're connecting with Telnet, Telnet has this negotiation so this client tried to do that negotiation request with my server, which is a dumb server. It doesn't know how to do anything, basically. <laughs> so now I can send it strings. I can just type test, hit enter, and it sends it. And this is what we're receiving on the other side. If I want to send something back to PuTTY, I can transmit it from my program. And it comes back. Now it didn't have the the line feed there. So you could do it like that. So the point of this is basically to have a way for certain devices to connect in and be controlled. Usually it's done a different way with a TCP IP client, which connects out from the processor to the device. And usually these days it's using a more secure method like SSH. So this doesn't have any encryption. Like I said, it's just plain text. And I was able to use this to copy in a big string of text into here and receive it in chunks in simple windows and my parser was able to deal with it. 
So I like to think of the TCP IP server as kind of a troubleshooting tool in my toolbox. And I would turn it off if I was actually having this on a deployed system. So just a quick tip, if you can't tell why it's not working, you can open up a terminal session to your processor, type the command netstat, and it'll show you a whole bunch of stuff in terms of what ports are listening. Just scroll to the top. We don't really care about all this stuff. We just want to see that right here, it's listening for a connection on port 5000 with the address of 0000, which is from anywhere. If you don't see that, then the server has not started and you can look in the error log, it might have some indication on why it didn't start. Now, the other thing is once you've made the connection, it's gonna take that port so it won't be listening anymore. So this is only before it's connected. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel and any comments that you can think of, just put them below and we'll talk about it. See you in the next video.